Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to continue my series on outlines by showing off a technique using an edge detection filter in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. Outlines complement a variety of visual styles, including tune shaders. In contrast to the whole outlines I implemented in the last video, these outlines use a post-processing effect to apply outlines to the entire screen. They don't change with perspective and can even accentuate color changes. This video uses Unity 2020.1.15 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0. If you're working with a newer version, check the comments for updates. Get started by setting up the URP, download the package, create a settings asset, and enable the pipeline in your project. Set up a test scene now as well. Edge detection outlines are a post-processing effect, meaning they run on the screen after all models have rendered. You can implement a post-processing effect using a renderer feature. I covered these in a previous video, linked in the corner and video description, and I recommend that you watch it. We'll use the blip material feature detailed there. This feature allows you to apply a material to the screen and thus run a shader over it. Copy or import the blip material feature c -sharp script into your project. Select the renderer setting asset and add a blip material render feature to it. Name it Outlines. Create a material to contain our future shader and place it in the feature settings. Set the path to zero and the event to after transparent. Our outline shader will use a special texture generated by the Universal Render Pipeline called the Depth Texture. To summarize, this texture contains the distance from the camera's view to the visible object in each pixel. We'll draw an outline wherever we see an edge in the depth texture, or in other words, wherever the value changes abruptly. Be sure to enable the depth texture in the URP settings asset. Now our shader can access it. Let's start on a shader to implement the edge detection algorithm. We can actually make it using the shader graph. Create a new unlit shader graph called edge detection outlines. We'll receive a texture from the camera and the underscore main text variable. So create a texture 2D property called main texture and set underscore main text as the reference. Create a sample texture 2D node and feed the main texture into it. Next, we need to implement edge detection using a custom function. Go back into the scene editor and create an edge detection outlines include.hlsl file. You'll have to do so using your operating system. Open that file in a script editor. This file will contain some shader code that the graph will execute in a custom function node. Don't worry, I'll explain the code as we go. This line at the top tells the compiler to compile this code only once. Next, we'll implement edge detection using a technique called the Sobel algorithm. It uses the concept of a convolution matrix or kernel. Imagine it as a funny 3x3 cell magnifying glass where each cell has a weight number associated with it. Each lens samples a texture at a point under it and multiplies the result by the weight of that cell. To evaluate the convolution matrix for a specific pixel on a texture, center the glass over that pixel. Then sample each color, apply the appropriate weight, and add all values together. By fiddling with the weights, you can achieve many different results, including detecting edges. The Sobel convolution matrix uses these specific weights. If you apply it near an edge, you can see that it amplifies differences in color. We can simply draw outlines where the effect is strongest. The Sobel algorithm has another component to make it even better at detecting corners. It applies two convolution matrices at once, one test for horizontal edges and the other for vertical edges. To combine them, form a vector using the two values and then take that vector's length. That gives the final Sobel value. Returning to the HLSL file, we must define the convolution matrices and their weights. This array holds the sample offsets for each cell in the matrix relative to the central pixel. This array holds the weights for the horizontal matrix and this one for the vertical matrix. Mark each as static, signaling that they will never change from the value set here. Now write the depth Sobel function where we'll run the Sobel algorithm over the depth texture. This float suffix tells the shader graph what types of numbers that we'll use. Next are the function arguments. We need two inputs, the UV position to place the convolution matrix over, as well as a thickness value to define the sample distance of said matrix. 
will output a single float variable for the final syllable value. Inside, initialize a float2 to hold the syllable value. The x component will contain the horizontal value and the y component, the vertical. Write a loop to compute each cell in the convolution matrix. This unroll attribute tells the compiler it can optimize this loop since it has a constant number of iterations. To read the depth texture, ShaderGraph defines this macro for us. Compute the sample UV by adding by the matrix offset, then multiply the depth value by the matrix weights. Just before returning, get the length of the syllable vector. Back in the shader graph, add a thickness float property and then create a custom function node. Click the gear and set up the inputs and outputs so that they correspond with the depth syllable function. Set the type to file, the name to depth syllable, and the source to our edge detection outlines include .hlsl file. If you see an error, make sure that there is no typos. Next, route a UV node and the thickness property into the custom function node's inputs. Now, we want to implement a few ways to fine-tune the syllable value and adjust the outlining strength. Add a depth, strength, depth tightening, and depth threshold float property. The threshold is the minimum syllable value that will appear as a full outline. Implement this with a smooth step node, which returns 1 if the input is larger than the maximum value. The tightening value removes outlines formed by weak edges. Use a power node to apply that. Finally, the strength value is a straight multiplier, allowing you to turn on and off outlines as needed. Now all that's left to do is combine the outline with the main texture. Use a blend node in overwrite mode to do that. This blends the colors like you would expect when working with an alpha channel. Create a color property for the outline color and then route each value into the blend node like so. Finally, route the output into the color field of the master node. Save the asset and return to the scene editor. We're almost there. Select your post-processing material and give it the outline shader. Hmm, no outlines show up. Turns out we need to enable a keyword to get the depth texture to work. Return to the shader graph, add a boolean keyword called depth texture, give it the required depth texture reference. Capitals and underscores do matter. Set the definition to multi-compile and the default to checked. Then, return to the scene editor. Depending on your Unity version, you may not have to do this, but I did when using 2020.1. If you see no outlines yet, select your material and click the three dots in the upper right corner of your inspector. Enter debug mode and type in the keyword into the shader keywords field. And that should do it, outlines should appear. If they still don't, turn off debug mode and play around with material settings. It's fun to experiment with them anyway. Let's see if we can get the algorithm to outline color changes as well. Turns out, URP supplies us with another texture, called the opaque texture, which saves a version of the camera's texture before it draws transparent meshes or applies post-processing. That's perfect for us, let's use it. Enable the opaque texture in your URP settings asset. Now open edge detection outlines include .hlsl file once again. Add this color syllable method. The logic is very similar to the depth syllable method. We'll use a convolution matrix to run the syllable algorithm over the opaque color texture. However, since color is made up of three floats instead of one as in depth, we must create three syllable vectors. Then, in the loop, accumulate the syllable value for each color channel separately. We then need some way to combine all three into one syllable value. Returning the maximum value of the three produced gave the best results. Return to the edge detection outlines graph. Duplicate the custom function node, click the gear, and change the function to color syllable. Feed the inputs like before, now we need to apply the same fine-tuning to the color syllable value, but with different settings. An easy way to do this is to create a subgraph. Select the depth fine-tuning nodes, right-click, and select convert to subgraph. Double-click the subgraph to look inside. Clean things up a bit by rearranging messy nodes, renaming properties, and renaming the output value. Then save the asset. Back in the main graph, reconnect the depth tuning values. Create properties for the color fine-tuning, a strength, tightening, and threshold value. And duplicate the fine-tuning node. 
hook up the new values for color. Now, combine the depth and color values using a maximum node, and feed that into the blend node's alpha. There's one more thing before we're ready for showtime. We must enable another keyword to use the opaque texture. Create a boolean keyword and set require opaque texture as the reference. Set definition again to multi-compile and the default to checked. Save the asset and return to the scene editor. Select the material, re-enable debug mode in the inspector and enter the require opaque texture keyword, separated from depth texture by a space. And there we go, more outlines. Turn off debug mode and then edit the material settings until things look right. Well, things are looking pretty good. I'd like to add another syllable pass over something called the depth normal texture, which will allow us to detect creases in the model as well as refine the depth testing. However, it requires a custom render feature, so I'll need to detail it in a future video. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss it. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video. It lets YouTube know to recommend it and it really helps the channel. Of course, please don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions. I have some for you. How do you plan to use outlines in your project? Is there a topic you'd like to see a video about? Thanks again for watching and make games.